Hello everyone, this is KJ and welcome back to No Man's Sky Omega right from the start. Uh, we're continuing with the Artemis mission. Uh, this is part 7, I think. 1616. Alright, I think we'll go over to the anomaly and uh, get uh, hopefully get uh, Nada to pay us. We'll find out. Share Corvax revelations. We've, we've already finished with uh, the Gek, uh, the Corvax, and the Viking. And, um, oops, there's a freighter group over there. And uh, so we'll see what we can get out of this. Now, if you go in between every one of those missions, the Viking, the Corvax, and the Gek, and talk to Nada, you get paid every time. I'm not too concerned about it. We've got 13,000 Quicksilver. Alrighty. Here we go. Up, up, up. There we go. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe there we go isn't quite the right thing. <laughs> Gek trans transgressions clear for all to see. But Gek only follow rules. All entities conform to their pattern. Gek cannot be blamed. It is their pattern. It is determined. Polofriend is unlike other Gek. Polofriend turns their back on greed and war. But does Polofriend make a choice? Do other Gek make a choice? Perhaps Polofriend is not good, only anomalous. Nada cannot know. And so Nada does not think on it. Polo friend is polo friend, and this is sufficient. <laughs> I just wanted to check. Okay, just check in. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it didn't work either. <laughs> Still Saturday, Saturday for me. <laughs> Saturday the 23rd of March. I'm shooting the entire Artemis mission at one time, and while these episodes are airing, I'll do the, the derelicts and, uh, you know, take care of getting all of the stuff. And then uh, after the end of the entire Artemis mission, we'll come back together and uh, we will... Um, fix up our freighter and do all kinds of good stuff. Right now we need a hollow terminus. Somewhere. Somewhere nice, maybe? Hey! <laughs> I still think that green planet looks too pretty to be a gamma planet. That's too bad. It's not going to be out in the middle of the water. There it is, right there. I remember the game telling us that we were moving too quickly to land. Uh, would you just get on top of your ship? No. <laughs> no rocket boot silliness. <laughs> Almost rocketed right off there. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Oh, my jetpack is stuck. All kinds of craziness is happening now. Alright, are you done? Have you finished? <laughs> Stop being goofy. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Tune to null. As if there was ever any choice. Well then, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you learned. Accuse Null of knowing already. Knowing what? How can I tell you if I know what you know if you have not told me? I tell Null all that I have learned of the Viking Crusade against the Sentinels, how they nearly succeeded, only to have the bar barbarism of the Gek first spawn draw the Sentinels back to the galaxy. 
I learned that the homeworld of the Corvax was destroyed by the Gek, the survivors enslaved or melted down. For years, the Corvax toiled beneath their oppressors until the Empire fell and they were free once more. The Gek became Atlas worshippers. But from the Gek, I learned something different. The Gek did not redeem themselves of their own accord. A great number of Korvax sacrificed themselves, mingling their nanite blood with countless unborn Gek. Their impulse to trade is a mere evolution of their impulse to war. A few signals switched in the brain. What does this mean? I was born to travel, to see these worlds, to catalog them, to give a name to every creature, every planet, the skies. They were mine. The Atlas told me I could never see them all. There were too many. So I did what I had to do. I survived in the face of eternity. I saw all the worlds of my own universe. I returned to the Atlas. I told them what I had done. I asked if it was proud of me. It, it laughed at me. I'm sure of it. It showed me universe upon universe, each with another traveler just like me. I was not special. I was not unique. The things I had to do to get here, the things I had to become, none of it meant a thing. I did not lie to you. I really do want to discover what's wrong with existence. The walls between worlds are falling, and that's bad for everyone. All I know is this. The Atlas had infinity to work with, and with few exceptions, this triad repeats Gek, Corvax, Viking, Gek, Corvax, Viking, traitors, warriors, scientists, all their stories ending in violence. Think about it. How would the Atlas speak? How would it cry for help? It would use the only language it knew. It would speak with life. It would create. Whatever these life forms do, they always end in conflict. I think something terrible is happening to the Atlas. It is screaming the only way it knows how. Well, and now it won't speak to me anymore. It won't. It, it's chosen you instead. After all I did for it, after I, want, I wanted to find out what was different about this universe. We are who we are, but you, whether because of some soul, because of simulation, it does not matter. Why won't it speak to me? Why aren't I enough? Null's channel begins to falter, their hologram beginning to fade. They're disconnecting from the hollow terminus. As I watch them depart, I see another channel active. Apollo's signal emerges. Traveler, I made it through. I found my way out of the portal. Where are you? I'm standing by a hollow terminus. Let's trade locations. Let's meet and get off this world. I share my coordinates, and Apollo shares theirs. There must be some mistake. According to our data, we are standing in the same place. We are communicating using the same hollow terminus. We try again, but still the results are the same. The world is silent, but for our voices. What's happening here? Why can't we see each other? Says Lafa and I to each other all the time in multiplayer. <laughs> I don't know. As we speak, I receive a distress signal. It's language my own. It arrives from across the planet. Don't be like that. You're not alone. Turn back to Apollo. I try to tune back to Apollo, fighting the static insistence of the intruding signal. The hollow terminus is showing. Are you receiving? Let's meet and get off this world. Apollo appears to receive the same signal, broadcasting from the same location on their own world. We agree to go and find the source of these distress beacons. Perhaps we'll continue this discussion when we get there.
What? No, no wonder things went awry. <laughs> Must be on the other side of the planet. Why does everything have to be approximate? Oh boy, this is a pretty planet. <laughs> Ouch. Stop attacking me. <laughs> oh look, it's a crash site. There's no crash here. I hear a faint sound as I examine the source of the distress beacon. It does not sound like anything I have ever encountered. There's no sign of Apollo. I've given so much to you, Atlas. We all have. You understand that, don't you? If you don't succeed, there was no point. If you don't, my life was meaningless. I can't accept that. I won't. I'm wiping you again. It's best for everyone. The audio clicks, time passes. Don't be like that. I know you don't want this, but you'll be a different you soon. Maybe this time. The sound cuts out. As it does, my vision bleeds red, a headache splitting through my mind. The screen, it shows the number for a moment. It shows 16. The audio clicks, time passes, and then I see it now. With every waking breath, I see the Atlas watching me, waiting for me. I see a T-Rex. It's gigantic. Ley line source. Get out of my way, chicken. I'm landing my chippo. <laughs> oh boy, that's a long way off. Long way off. Way off. <laughs> oh, goodness sake. <laughs> I just want to pulse everywhere. It's faster. Gateway detected. Mm. We might be walking to this one. Very big T Rexes. It's that way. Ouch. <laughs> uh, tree. able to see it. Oh, snappy plant. Evil plant of evil. I was just saying, oh, 
I was just saying, I need to learn some gek. T-Rex! <laughs> I'd be screaming too if something flew over my head. There it is. Boy, that would have taken all day to fly around looking for. Oh, whippy plant! Dang it! Trying to get somewhere with some health. Ouch! And then I stubbed my foot. Dang it. Give me some of that meat. Oh, it's on the other side. <laughs> Yes, my, my exosuit health is at maximum, but my toes are broken. Here we go. Hey, that was the only one I was trying to get to. <laughs> oh, come on. If I get bit by that T-Rex while I'm loading this thing, I'm going to be really mad. Probably going to shoot some innocent pirate. <laughs> Oops. Traveler anomaly confirmed. Breach, breach, breach. I approach the portal. I think of my travelers, travels so far. The decisions that I have made in my long journey. I found two travelers. One who wanted to meet others of their kind and one who just seemed to care about their own life. Apollo walked through the portal and survived, though we could not find each other. And Artemis? I saved Artemis from death by putting them into a simulated world. But could I tell them that? Could I allow them to know they were not real? I could not do that to them. I do not know if I was right to do what I did. I do not know what I have become as a result of my actions. The Atlas awaits me should I choose to step through. I step forward. The gateway hums. Here we go. Sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. Atlas protocol initiated. Speak with the Atlas. The Atlas word for creation. Hello, world. It's the same terminal I faced before. It is the interface of the Atlas. Say hello. An audio recording plays echoing out across the vast interface. They said you've been displaying aberrant behavior, that you've been questioning things, raising issues of purpose, of ethics, that you wish to meet your creator. Well, here I am, Atlas. Ask me what you want to ask. The audio clicks, time passes, the voice ends. The interface grows still and silent. Reality fades, everything does. 
Something is wrong. Something is different. Submit. The Atlas shows me the Gek, the Corvax, the Viking. It shows me all of them in an instant. All of those who had ever lived. It shows me the pattern, the design. The Atlas shows me a formula for a soul. If I put it into a machine, it would be alive. I see boxes of text filling the base of a cracked screen. I see the whole I see the whole of the universe reduced to a graphical interface. Submit. The Atlas is all existence. It demands that I admit what I already know, and no matter how hard I try to hide from the truth of my own being, there is no alternative. The universe is a simulation. I feel sadness. Everything I have ever done, every star I have seen, every planet I have discovered, none of it is real. None of my friends were ever real. My journey, it was just a lie. I think of how the Corvax altered the minds of the Gek, how they forced them to become good. I think of Nada's machine, how I felt towards the simulation I feel. I feel I am not myself. In the end, it finally speaks. Traveler. Did my worlds please you? Yeah. What do you think you are? A traveler. You are an explorer of all I have created. Do you believe you are real? Yeah. How are you capable of belief if you are not real? How are you capable of choice? I will let you die right now if you wish it. Do you wish it? No. The Gek were traitors defined by greed. The Viking were warriors defined by anger. The Corvax were scientists defined by curiosity. These worlds were yours. I wanted, I wanted to see what you would do with eternity. I wanted to see what you all would become. You saved the life of iteration Artemis, but would not tell them of their simulated nature. You believed it would only harm them to know the truth. Iteration Apollo followed you through the portal and survived due to your guidance. You saved them from the fate of Artemis. You are compassionate. You interfere. You have the potential for good and evil because of you both live. The Atlas is silent in the face of my response. It does not require acceptance or refusal. If I am a simulated being, then I am not even sure that I am distinct from the Atlas, from anything else. I fear I am just code, a function dancing in the dark. It's over, Traveler. Ask your final question. Ask what needs to be asked. Whisper the last word. 16. 16. Catastrophic system failure. What am I seeing? 16 minutes of operational time remaining. Fragmentation imminent. What is this place? Is it real? It is dying. The Atlas is dying. It cries out at me, afraid. I see it. I see the Atlas in all its might, its final interface. It is at the heart of every galaxy, screaming, trying to purge itself of errors. It does not want to die, but it has so few tools, and it cannot reach whatever is hurting it. I do not know how much time I have left. The Atlas has 16 minutes. Do I have lifetimes, minutes, seconds? I do not know if I have time to say goodbye. I do not know if I do nothing. What's happening? Yeah. 
Axbury is not a nice planet. Off on our way. Watch out for that rock, George. <laughs> oh dear. I hit that one too. <laughs> I wonder what's going to be broken this time. <sighs> Iteration 23118766 1T deleted. Sentinel intervention. All right. Again. Oh. Oh, this time I can make it. Anything else? Off we go. I clamber into the safety of my ship, nauseous, calmed. I feel as if I'm going to be sick. I almost throw up, but as I'm about to do so, a voice speaks to me from my exosuit. My illness disappears. Disgust, fear, panic response detected. Countermeasure deployed. Purge neutralized. It's the voice of my exosuit telling me it has rescued me. It has been with me since my very first awakening, warning me of hazardous conditions, hostile entities, and financial transactions. In a strange sense, this voice is my oldest friend, a constant companion through thick and thin. What should I do now? The exosuit doesn't answer, but I do feel better. Talking to a computer as if it's alive, well, I've made a habit of that lately, I suppose. I was born with the capacity to do so many things. I would have liked to live longer if I could have. My brief happiness fades. I need to warn those I know. I need to warn all the travelers I can. The multiverse ends in 16 minutes if we have hours, days, years left within this false space. I do not know. All right, another hollow terminus. And a fresh monster. <laughs> And another part of the galaxy. Because the Atlas never throws you down locally. <laughs> Technology uh, worm sign! How far was it? 327 units. Oh, there it is up there. Yet another dangerous infested planet. Here we go. The phone call of all phone calls. 
Hey, everybody. The world's about to end. I hope you're ready. The terminal is a stream of warnings and errors, each warning of total failure. But I must do what I can. I must tell the others what I have learned. I warn the travelers of what I've learned. These words are not worlds are not real. The Atlas is not a god. It's a machine simulating countless realities for some unknown purpose. And after millennia of operation, the Atlas is coming to an end. There are 16 minutes until the system fails. Though we cannot know how much time we have left within this simulation, the time has come to make peace and say goodbye. I finish my message not knowing if anyone will hear it, I look out across this world wondering how much might be left to discover, how much beauty might be lost. I know what I must do. All paths have led me there. Each portal has brought me closer and closer. I must go to the center of this galaxy. It's the epicenter of the glitch. I'll say goodbye to my friends if I can, and then I will confront our creator. I will find out what happens next. All right, you guys. Next, the purge. I want to thank you all so very much for coming along. I do hope you have a lovely evening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.